centrifuge. A centrifuge spins around, similar as to when you have an aircraft that makes very tight maneuvers, getting from 1G to 9G in a little less than one second, which means if you weigh 200 pounds, in a little less than one second, you're going to weigh 1,800 pounds. Push it out, push it all the way up, all the way up. Under this kind of stress, the pilots blacked out when the G-forces prevented blood from reaching their brain. This result was no surprise. But then things got strange. Three, two, one, pressure. Some of the things that we were finding were seeing a bright light, seeing family and friends, familiar scenes, what would be considered out-of-body experiences, that they were above themselves, looking down at themselves. Winnery and his pilots were momentarily deprived of oxygen, but they were nowhere near death. Winnery and his pilots were momentarily deprived of oxygen, but they were nowhere near death. They were nowhere near death. The major impact of Winnery's experiment is that it strongly suggested near-death experiences weren't some sort of mystical phenomenon, but the result of extreme stress on the brain. As the brain gets closer and closer to death, the brain starts to only fire in areas which are very, very basic to survival. Closer and closer to the brain stem. It's a very small and very fundamental and primitive part of the brain. So the visual cortex, the back part of the brain, or the superior colliculi, which is considered part of the brain stem, if they are activated, all you see is light. And so to see a, a light with a lot of darkness around it, our best interpretation is that's a tunnel. And we are attracted because we are mammals, we are attracted to light. One of the mysteries with near-death experiences is no one can say exactly when they happen. Are they happening as we approach death or as we return? Just like in our dreams, our dreams are just a conglomeration of firing of the central nervous system as we sleep. And our experiences help us put these things together in some sort of imagery. It may be bizarre imagery to us when we experience it in a dream, but the same thing is most likely happening with near-death experiences. As you awaken from this, more of the brain now is starting to be recruited. Well, think of the things that are the most deep-seated in your consciousness. And those are your life experiences. And as those are re-energized, then those memories would be part of what you would experience. You would say, yes, my whole life has gone before me. I worry that as you tell the story over and over again, you start to build on it and it becomes real to you. That doesn't mean that that they don't have visions at near death. It doesn't mean that their visions are inaccurate or that they're lying. I think it's just human nature that you reflect on it. And the more you reflect on it, the more detailed you become.